Hey, morning all. Um, we're going to move on to a new topic today and it's called uh, tabular statements. And uh, this time we're going to start with an ordinary level question and then we'll move on to the higher level. Now, at ordinary level, I think it's only ever come up as a 60 mark question. So it'll be in the 60 mark section when uh, you're looking for the questions that I'll ask you to do in a moment. And at higher level, though, it can be either a 60 or a 100 mark question. So we'll uh, start with the ordinary level, then the 60 mark higher level, then the 100 mark higher level. OK, um, so uh, how is it presented? Normally, it gives you you're given a balance sheet like this. OK, this is ordinary level. So it's quite a uh, straightforward balance sheet, just a few fixed assets, current assets and then the um, uh, current liability and the finance by section, as you can see, is quite small here. Just capital in, in most other questions, I'd say in the ones you're doing, there'll probably be capital and profit and loss. Um, but in this one, just the capital. OK, uh, then there is uh, there's a whole bunch of information, uh, things that happen throughout the month uh, at ordinary level. At higher level, it's normally um, they give you, I suppose, uh, this is a balance sheet from the 1st of October, October rather in um, the higher level. It's from the 1st of January. And then there's a whole bunch of things that happen. We'll say this will be, say, February, March, April, May. But it's the same idea. It's the same idea. They'll just be uh, items that happened uh, through a, a year or a month, as it were, in ordinary level. OK, and then you're required to record on a tabular statement the effect of each of the above transactions had on the relevant assets and liabilities and show the total at the end of the month. OK, so. Uh, the first thing to note, I suppose, how it looks, a tabular statement. I've actually done it out. It's a grid. It's like a grid that you'd create in um in Microsoft Word or like a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel, just a whole load of cells. OK, so you in the leaving search, you'll be given um, a piece of paper with all of these cells already created and you'll have to fill in the writing. There won't be any of this information in here, but you'll be given a grid with all of the um, cells uh, while you're practicing at home. Unfortunately, you'll have to be ruling these out yourself for the next few weeks. OK, so what you do is um, you create um, uh, this grid. OK, on the first column going down here, you list all of the assets that are in the balance sheet. So as we can see, buildings, vehicles, stock, debtors, bank. That's the fixed assets and the current assets. They go in here under assets, buildings, vehicles, stock, debtors, bank, the exact same ones. OK, um, I leave a space of a few rows and then a total line here. OK, the reason I leave the space is because in case you need to introduce new assets or more assets during the course of the question, you'll have, um, I suppose, extra redundant space that you can move into. OK, um, then you'll also take whatever figure there is for those assets. So, for instance, this was buildings was 330, motor vehicles was 105, etc. You put that figure in here, 330, 105. OK, you put it in the second column. The second column has the date of the whatever the balance sheet is dated for. 1st of October 2007, 1st of the 10th 2007. OK, in your total, then this line here, uh, you just add up 330, 105, 33, 36, 2, 22, 7, and you get this total here, 526,900. OK. Then in the bottom half of your tabular statement, you start again with a, a heading that says liabilities and you put in all of the things that are in the um, current liability section and in the, let's say, kind of the long term liability section or the finance by section. And so in, in this case, there's only three things, creditors, expenses due and capital, 29,000, 1,900 and 496,000. 29,000, 1,900, 496,000. Put those three things in here leave a few empty cells in case you need or empty rows in case you need them later on total these and they should come to the same total as the total you got above if they don't come to the same total you've made a mistake okay they have to come to the same total okay so that's the first thing setting it up those are the first two columns after that then there's a column for each one of the dates over here october 3rd or the 3rd of the 10th i've said 7th of the 10th 9th of the 10th so 3rd of the 10th 7th of the 10th 9th of the 10th etc all the way until after you've come to the last one of those dates um i just create a it's like another total column down here so you'll be putting individual entries in here and then you'll be adding so if i put in something here and here i'll be adding this row across and putting the total in here afterwards OK, same goes for each of these rows. We'll total them across and put the total in here. Um, and I suppose that's basically it, really. OK, uh, so uh, 
just uh, we'll go through each of the items one at a time but first thing to say is we'll be putting items in here on the top and on the bottom sometimes only on the top and not on the bottom um, and sometimes in both places but whenever we put any items in the top and the bottom for instance the total of the entries that we put in here we put we total down here the total of the entries that we put with say in here we total down here whoops we total down here and the total that we put in here must always equal the total we put in here. And the same goes all the way along. This total has to be the same as that total. This total has to be the same as that total. Or else, again, you've done something wrong. Okay? Right, let's get started then. Um, October 3rd. So, received a check for 2300 from a debtor in full settlement of a debt of 2500 So, if we received a check, that means that our bank account went up by 2300 okay so what we do simply is we look at our bank asset here and we put it up by 2300 in other words we put a plus 2300 into this uh, box or cell here so that when we're totaling across it means our bank account will be gone up by 2300 so we received a check so our bank account goes up by 2300 okay it was from a debtor in full settlement of the debt that they owed us. And the debt they owed us was 2500 So if it was in full settlement, that means we're cancelling 2500 of their debt. We're saying, that's fine, that check for 2300 will do and we'll cancel all of your 2500 debt. So our debtors must go down by 2500 Okay, so far so good. Now the next thing is though, um, if I add these two together because again anything I put in this column I must total and put the total down here if I add these two together it's minus two and a half thousand plus two thousand three hundred so it gives me a minus two hundred in total okay now problem is I've got to have a minus two hundred down here as well so I'm missing something down below okay and that something is, again, you'll get used to, the more of these you do, the more you'll get used to exactly what that is. Uh, that something is, well, our creditors haven't been affected by this. Our expenses due haven't been affected by this. Our capital hasn't been affected by this. What has been affected is something that isn't here yet or already. So we must introduce a new thing. And that new thing is something that we use quite a lot in this question, actually. And it's profit and loss. And any entry that would normally go into the profit, or most entries, I should say, I suppose, that would normally go into the profit and loss account, if you were, if you had like a trading profit and loss and a balance sheet, well, that amount goes in here as a plus or a minus. So if you had a, like for instance, a gain in the profit and loss, you'd put in a plus down here. If you had a, an expense in the profit and loss, you'd put it in as a minus down here. And so what's after happening? When we accepted less than what the debt was, it means that we've given that debtor a discount of 200 euros. We said, fine, you owe us 2,500, pay us 2,300, we'll let you off the other 200, that's a discount. So if we've, got a, we've given them a discount, it's a discount allowed, and we know discount allows are treated as expenses in the profit and loss account, and so that's a minus 200 for that discount allowed. And now when we total up here, we just have one minus 200, which adds to minus 200, and both our balances, if you like, are balanced, and that's fine. So that's generally how this question goes. We'll go through a few more now and see. So bought goods on credit for 12,800. Okay, so we purchase goods on credit for 12,800. That means we owe our creditors another 12,800. We bought goods on credit, we haven't paid for it yet, so our creditors go up by 12,800. That's fine there. What happens up here though? Our stock goes up by 12,800. Remember, we, stop, we uh, value our stock at cost price, so we, whatever we paid for it is cost price, so our stock goes up also by 12,800. And that's simply it. This, when I add up the top half, comes to 12,800. When I add up the bottom half, whoops, comes to 12,800. Okay, next one. Paid by check expenses that were due at the beginning of the month. So we paid these expenses off by check, the ones that were due at the beginning of the month. So if we paid them off, well, they're no longer due, so we can reduce our expenses due by 1,900 because we paid them off. 
What else happens up here? Well, if we paid by check, our bank account goes down by 1,900, doesn't it? Because we have 1,900 less in the bank. And, oops, I never totaled up here. 1,800. This is the disadvantage of not being in class. There's nobody to tell me I forgot to do something. Okay, so when I total the top on this one, it's minus 1,900. And when I total the bottom over here, it's minus 1,900. Okay. Uh, oh, sugar. Hold on. Did I put that in twice? So, oh, I put. I thought this was the total last time I put it in there, did I? I did. I did. Whoops. Now, that's the problem with having these two um, gaps. Excuse me. So 12,800, 12,800, 12,800, 12,800. That's fine. Okay, uh, the 11th, let's have a look. Uh, paid by check a creditor's account balance of 6,300 and received a discount of 300. So this time we received the discount of 300. So the creditor's account balance was 6,300. But if we received a discount of 300, it means we only paid 6,000. So again, our bank account goes down by 6,000 because we paid out 6,000. Okay, um, our where's our creditor? We paid off a creditor that we owed six thousand three hundred. So the amount we owe is going down by six thousand three hundred. But also because we had a discount received, and that's regarded as a gain in the profit and loss, we have a plus three hundred in our profit and loss. So then when we tally these, minus six three and plus three is minus six thousand. And up here, we've just got one thing. It's minus 6,000. And that's perfect. Your two balances are, oh my goodness, balancing. Okay. Next one then. Um, it is, where were we? October 15th. Sold on credit goods, which cost 11,300 for 14,500. So we sold these goods, which means we no longer have them anymore which means our stock is going to go down by 11,300 for a start. Where's our stock? 11,300. They're gone. Okay. We sold them on credit for 14,500, which means our debtors is going up by 14. Whoops. 500. Okay. And then, so... The difference between the two of them, the, oh, I'm just going to put it into the bank again by accident. The total is down here. Uh, a minus 11.3 and a plus 14.5 is plus 3,200. Okay. And down here, the as you can imagine, the plus 3,200 is really the profit that you made on selling those goods. The difference between what you bought them for and what you sold them for. So the profit and loss goes up by... 3,200 and so you have a total here of 3,200 and a total down here of 3,200 okay uh, maybe we'll get one more in and then we'll uh, have to divide it into another video uh, where were we this one a debtor who owed 800 was declared bankrupt and paid 20 cent in the euro Okay, so the debtor, I always like to start you can start wherever you want with these really but I like to start with the easy stuff the debtor paid us something so our bank account is going to change they paid us something so our bank account is going to go up in fact isn't it 20 cent in the euro that's 20 percent and they owed 800 well 10 percent is 80 so 20 percent is 160 isn't it so our bank account first start is going to be going up by 160 plus 160 that all right now they owed us 800 um but they're um declared bankrupt we are going to have to take the 160 from what they owed us and reduce our um, debtors by that much. But also, we're not going to get any of the rest of that 800 from them because they're gone bankrupt. So we may as well just take the whole 800 out of our debtors, including the amount they paid and the amount they're never going to pay. So our debtors goes down by 800. Okay, And the difference between minus 800 and plus 160 is minus 640. Okay. So you have minus 640 here. And as you can imagine, uh, down below in the um, in the liability section, well, that would have been entered in the profit and loss account as a bad debt, which is an expense. So we've got a full minus 640 expense going into the profit and loss. And that totals again as minus 640. Okay, maybe one more then. Uh, where were we? 
paid by check from business bank account 1700 for repairs to private residence so we used the business's money to pay for repairs to our private residence so that's drawings isn't it but we paid from the business bank account so the business bank account is going down by 1700 so again try and see that's the bank line down by 1700 but again that minus 1700 i'm just going to total it here is drawings now drawings normally goes into the finance by section of the balance sheet but we didn't have any drawings here already so we're going to have to introduce a new uh, liability if you like but it's not really um in there and it's going to be now it's going to be minus 1700 and i suppose this is a tricky one to think about because it's the drawings are going up by 1700 there's no doubt about that but drawings is the only thing down here that's entered as a minus like for instance anytime you have a finance buy your capital whether it's share capital or otherwise goes in as a plus your profit and loss goes in as a plus well unless it's a loss you're carrying forward um your we'll say for instance revaluation reserve revenue reserve all pluses but you always subtract your drawings so your drawings is a minus so if there had been drawings here at the very beginning then in here we would have been putting in minus something or other we'd put it in in brackets to start off so if then we wanted to increase the amount in brackets here we'd put it in as a minus along the way somewhere as well and that's why the drawings is going up but we're putting it in as a minus because the drawings figure is a minus figure so that's why that's minus 1700 and we'll continue the rest of it in a second